Mr. Craig, thank you very much. That was fabulous as always. We're glad you're here tonight. We're glad you're back. Ronaldo did a great job for you last week, but we missed you. And we're glad you're back. So thanks for being back. We also have Sally Joe with us tonight. So Sally Joe, thanks for being with us tonight. How are you all tonight? So I want you to think for a moment of the most spiritual, holy, sacred, divine experience you've ever had. Where you felt the most unconditionally loved where you felt the presence of God so complete that maybe it was life-changing in that moment. I have a vision. That's what I want us to create on Wednesday nights. I want us to create something that is whole, holy, so sacred, so unconditionally loving, so godly, that just by walking in, people are healed. People are blessed. People, lives are transformed. So I want you to hold that vision with me, will you? To really imagine that we could create something that was the experience of pure God. Will you join me in thinking that? Okay, let's stand. Let's sing together our opening song as we get going. supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just what I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just what I'm supposed to be. Oh, my soul is welcome here. Oh, my soul is welcome here. I am getting the message loud and clear. My soul is welcome here. Oh, my soul is welcome here. Oh, my soul is welcome here. I am getting the message loud and clear. My soul is welcome here. I am getting the message loud and clear. My soul is welcome here. 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 Feel it. My soul is welcome here. My soul is welcome here. You know it is. My soul is welcome here. My soul is welcome here. My soul is welcome here. I invite you to turn to the people around you and greet them with a hug or a handshake and let them know how glad you are that they're with you tonight. How are we doing tonight? You ready? Our opening statement for tonight is I go forth with a spirit of enthusiasm, excitement, and expectancy. Is that what it says? I love it when it works. Here, let's say it together. I go forth with a spirit of enthusiasm excitement and expectancy let's say it one more time because i want you to feel it i go forth with a spirit of enthusiasm excitement and expectancy let's take that into prayer and i want you to feel in every area of your life going forth with a spirit of enthusiasm excitement and expectancy then how would you live that in the greatest possible way if you were on fire tonight with the spirit of enthusiasm, excitement, and expectancy, if you just absolutely knew that life was going to get better and better, that amazing things were unfolding, that every one of your hopes and dreams and desires was going to unfold in the perfect way at the perfect time, and then no matter what happened, that God was right there to guide you, to lead you, to open doors of possibilities. But tonight we talk about going forth with a spirit of enthusiasm, excitement, and expectancy. To be all that God created us to be. And to experience all that God is. In the name and through the power of the living Christ, we give thanks. 
And so it is. Amen. Okay, let's do our mission together, shall we? Together. Unity of Phoenix is a loving spiritual community that welcomes all people and honors all paths to God. We are dedicated to transforming lives by inspiring and awakening individuals to discover God's spirit within them. All right, anyone here for the very first time? Sally Joe, you ready? This is, we're gonna prepare for our time of meditation. I invite you, if you haven't already, to turn off your cell phone. Please turn off your cell phone. Really get quiet as Sally Joe sings to us and really prepare a space for the presence of God in your life. you to take a deep breath and I want you to inhale the presence and power of God that is all around you and as you exhale I want you to relax and let go of all the events of this day of this week and let your body know that you're safe that right here, right now, everything that you need is already provided. So with each deep breath and each time you let go, feel the presence and power of God that's within you and all around you. See if you can release all the anxiety in your life. See if you can let go of all the scared places. And each time that you breathe in, just breathe in the pure love of God. That so much of the spiritual journey is about learning to let go. That we get so used to hanging on to our thoughts and our beliefs and our fears, to all the busyness of our lives, that we start getting more and more wound up. So tonight, what if you just let go? What if you just give it all back to God? What if you live this day just completely free of all worry and anxiety, fears? And you just live your life knowing that God is completely in charge and that God's got you. God, I give you my life and everything in it. I give you my worries and my fears, my concerns, my anxious places, the places where I hold on so tightly, I give it all to you. So that I may be truly free. Free to be your radiant son or daughter. Free to be the living expression of all that you are. 
free to shine like the sun. Free of all the worries and cares and concerns that cause me to shrink into fear. Tonight, God, I give it all. I let it all go. I let it all go. I let it all go. And I live in the joy of your spirit. I live in the simple process of listening to my soul, to my, the desires of my heart. Living in faith and trust. Living knowing that we are one. So today I go forth with a spirit of enthusiasm, excitement, and expectancy. I go forth with a spirit of enthusiasm, excitement, and expectancy. And so it is. Amen. And now will you join with me as we sing together our Lord's Prayer. sure how to, to go after that talk. I mean, after that song. <laughs> we'll just see what happens, right? Here we go. I, I feel like I should do my Kermit voice, but you know. So, because <laughs> what I really want to talk about today is life and death. Right? So, it's a little awkward of a transition, but it'll work, right? Because in unity, we spend a lot of time talking about life. It's our theme for this year, living more. Because in unity, the focus is if we help people live great lives now, we absolutely believe and know that the afterlife will take care of itself. But today, what I want you to really look at is it's kind of amazing to me how many people are afraid of the other side? It's, and so I want to talk about life, and I want to talk about death today. Because the way that we live impacts our next life. And that's important. See, one of my mentors in, in ministry was a man named Jack Bolin. Anybody know Jack Bolin or met Jack Bolin? Ja Jack Bolin 
was the minister at uh, the Unity Church in Warren, Michigan, which at the time when he was there, it was called Church of Today. He was there for many years. He was, it was his only ministry that he served. He was there, and many of us know about the mastermind groups and the mastermind principles that he took from the 12 Steps and Napoleon Hill and merged them together and created mastermind groups. And, and he was a real, he was a mentor to me. He was one of the ministers that when I first thought about coming to this, and I was asked to come to this ministry years and years ago, I went and talked to Jack, and Jack said, you need to take that church. And he was a, a, a big presence in my life. In many ways, I believe that Jack, Jack taught me how to do successful church. And I was here about six months, and Jack made his passing. But what was amazing about that for me is because Jack had been sick for a while, but he just kept getting up. Like it almost didn't matter how sick he was, he kept getting up on Sunday morning because it, it fueled his soul. That he loved being in that experience. And in March of 2002, he made his passing. And what was so amazing about that for me was that he did it on March 4th. And, and it's like one of those things that's, you could say was a coincidence, but it was 100% the way he lived his life to March 4th. That he lived his life about going for it in, in every way. And even when it came time for him to pass over to the other side, he marched forth. And so my question for you today really is, can you see ways that life is asking, inviting you to march forth in a greater way? Can you see ways that you've turned it down? And would you be willing to march forth? See, the scripture that I want to use today comes from Matthew, Matthew 16. And Jesus asked the question, he said, he asked his disciples, who do the men of who do they who do men say that I am? And they said, Some say you're John the Baptist, others say you're Elijah, some say you're Jeremiah, and some the prophets of old. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter said to him, You are the Christ, you are the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered, Blessed are you, Simon. For flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my Father who is in heaven. So did Jesus ask that question because he needed to be affirmed by his disciples? Do you think he was having like a bad Messiah day? You know, and he just needed to know that people still saw that he was the guy, right? Or maybe it was like, you know, maybe he was looking in the mirror, you know, if you ever looked in the mirror and thought, you know, do I look fat in this outfit? You know, and so you ask whoever's around you, you know, to affirm that you look okay or you don't look okay. Oh, no, change it, right? So my question is really, was he asking the question for the benefit of his own need to hear or was he asking the question because the way they answered it revealed more about the disciples than him? Have, have you ever had that experience where the way you experience somebody has more to do with you than it has to do with them? Like, like that experience where you know if they could just all get their act together, then you wouldn't have any problems at all in life, 
Right? Is anybody else, nobody else has had that experience? Where the problem isn't in here, it, the problem has to be out there, right? So if everybody out there would just get their stuff together, we could live a calm, peaceful, drama-free existence, right? So there's this time, sometimes in our life, where we really believe that what we're seeing has very little to do with us and everything to do with out there. But the truth is, right, that you can't see outside of you something that's not at some level inside of you. It's recorded in, in several of the Gospels, Jesus asking that question, who do you think I am? Who do you say that I am? And I really believe that he was asking the question to see their own spiritual evolution. Because if they could see his spiritual truth, it was a sign that they were beginning to see their own. Does, does that make sense? Are you with me on that one? And so when he was asking the question, he was kind of checking their own spiritual awakening. But then he goes further. And this is where, for me, it gets even more interesting. He says, And for you, Peter, on this rock I will build my church, for the power of death shall not come against it. And I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever is loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And then he gave them strict orders not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. So here's where I think it gets really interesting. Jesus was really clear that that one idea that he was the son of the living God was the basis on this rock we will build my church. Now, did he believe that just for himself? Or did he believe that for all of us, right? So he has this underlying belief that this one belief, this one idea will be the rock on which the whole church is built. That, that we are the son of the, we are the daughters, we are the expressions of the living God, right? So that's the fundamental idea that I want you to really hold on to tonight is that when we know that we are the son or daughter of the living God, when we know that we are the living expression of all that God is, that that is the key to the kingdom. That, that when we don't have that one key, when we don't have that one piece of information, when we don't have that one belief, when we don't have that one idea, then life gets confusing. Because now we're circling around chasing our tail and, and we're missing the most important thing. But when we have the key, we can put the key in and everything opens up to us. But without that key, there's a whole lot of confusion. Because without that key, we're, we're in experiences where we're trying to be good enough or we're trying to be spiritual enough or we're trying to be this or we're trying to be what other people expect us to be. We're doing all these crazy things instead of the most important thing, which is knowing that we are created in the image and likeness of God. And when we put that key in, it unlocks the kingdom of heaven. But without that key, we're just kind of dancing around the issue. Can you see times in your life where you've maybe felt inadequate or insufficient and you did a whole lot of dancing because you didn't think you were enough just the way you are? Does, does that relate to anybody? Right. So what I want you to see is the key to the kingdom is unlocked, that the key, the key to the kingdom is unlocked, but you have to know that you're created in the image and likeness of God. You have to know that you're the son or daughter of the Most High, and then when that key goes in, everything else opens up, right? So if we're going to move forth, if we're going to march forth in our life, that piece is the fundamental piece. Because if we march forth 
without the most important piece, we're just doing a crazy dance. And everybody can think of a time. I, I just... I, I just know this is true, that everybody can think of a time when you got so scared, you were running around like a chicken, what's the expression? And, and it's a little gross, don't call PETA, but it's a little gross, right? But you, you know what it is, like, like a chicken with its, I didn't say it. Right? But it's the idea when we're disconnected from our own identity, from the truth of who we are, we're marching forth, but we're marching forth from our craziness. We're marching forth from this broken belief in ourselves that doesn't move us forward. That the key to the kingdom, the first understanding, is that we're created in the image and likeness of God. And when that key is in place, the door to the kingdom opens. Then, he teaches something that is absolutely radical. Now, how many of you were taught that when you die and you get to the other side, everything's going to be perfect? Six of us know. Come on. How many of you were taught that? All right, great, right? So the idea is that when we die, no matter, and, uh, and it, usually it's taught that we have to be a good person, right? Or, or some variation of that theme. We have to be, and we had to have done it right, and we're a good person. And then when we get to the other side, everything is going to be absolutely fantastic, right? We're gonna, it's heaven, for gosh sakes. Of course it's going to be fantastic. Can I just tell you, that's not what he taught. And I think it's important to know that. Wouldn't you want to know that? Now, let me go over what he said, right? I, it's his words, right? So let me go, because I want you to hear this, right? I give you the keys to the kingdom, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be lost in heaven, lo lost in heaven. Awkward, right? So what does that mean? Anybody want to take a stab at it? What does it mean? Whatever you hang on to here, you hang on to there. Whatever you let go of here, it is let go of forever. Now, how many of us think, well, I don't really have to get that lesson. Because I'll just work it out over there. I don't really have to forgive that guy. Because I'll just forgive him over there. So what he's really teaching us is the only difference between here and there is there we don't have a body. But your drama here, guess where it goes? With you. So the only difference between here and there is you go from being physical to spiritual. But your drama goes with you. Like, oh my gosh, somebody should be teaching this a long time ago. I got a whole lot of stuff to clean up before now. You know, somebody should have given me a little bit of warning about this one because I don't want to take all this stuff with me. Right? God is so good that if you don't get your house cleaned out in time, you get to take it with you. <laughs> right? If you don't get your closets cleaned out before you get to the other side, guess what? Apparently they come with you. If you have unresolved issues, guess what? God loves you so much, God will give you another go around with it. Only that go around is eternal. Right? 
How many of you have a family member that you know tonight you have better forgive? Because you do not want to take that stuff with you. Right? I want you to really hear this because I want you to be able to march forth. I want you to live your life as if you're marching forth every day knowing that this could be the last one. And that you're not holding anything back because you're clean on this side and you will be clean on that side. So what are you going to hold on to? Do you really want to go over to the other side believing that you're broken? Do you want to go on the other side believing you're not quite enough? Do you want to go on the other side believing that things just don't quite work for you? Because what you bind yourself to in this life you are bound to in that life. What you let go of in this life, you let go of forever. Now, unity, we don't teach hell. We don't. We believe in consciousness, that life is consciousness, that life is what we create. Now, can you imagine getting to the other side opening the door to your eternal experience and seeing your garage right in front of you. <laughs> All right, you open the door and there's Uncle Harry. Hi, we've been waiting. Right? It's like, no, this isn't what I signed up for. I'm not sure where I am. Is this heaven or hell? I'm not sure. Right? Because whatever we bind on earth we are bound in heaven. Whatever we set free now, it is set free forever. Can everybody see at least one issue? Issue. I know you, you don't have any issues. But can everybody see at least one issue that you know that you've been dodging healing in your lifetime? So how long do you want to hold on to it? You want another year? You want another five years? Do you want forever? So everything we heal, we heal forever. So what's really the only thing we have to heal? Not even us. Because there's really... If you're created in the image and likeness of God, there's nothing wrong about you. The only thing that we have to heal is any belief that we're not created in the image and likeness of God. Everything else is just a symptom. That the more you know the truth, you put in the key, and the kingdom of heaven opens to you. The more you dance in your drama, it's a long dance. Because even on the other side, your drama goes with you. You can't afford to believe anything less than the truth about yourself. And I mean really believe it with your mind, your heart, and your soul. I am created in the image and likeness of God. Will you say that with me? I am created in the image and in the likeness of God. One more time like we mean it. I am created in the image and likeness of God. Tonight, I got a challenge for you. I do, and it's a big one. Because living more this year is not just about this year. But it's really about you being what God created you to be from the beginning of time. That you're a soul who's come into this world to be the living expression of your creator. 
And you get as much time with your drama. You get as much time with your fears and your insecurities and your worries and your woundedness. You get as much time with that stuff as you need. But what if tonight you decided to put it down? And it was put down forever. What if tonight you decide to let it go? And you let it go forever. One more time. I am created in the image and likeness of God. One more time. I am created in the image and likeness of God. Will you pray with me? I invite you to open your mind, your heart, your soul tonight to a new truth of who you are. To standing in that absolute truth that you were created in the image and in the likeness of God. That you were whole and complete and lacking in nothing. And tonight, that you get to set your soul free. And that you get to ask for help. God, I need help. I need help in letting go of all the things that I have believed about myself that are less than the spiritual truth. I'm ready to march forth. I'm ready to march forth free and unlimited. In the name and through the power of the living Christ, we give thanks, and so it is. Amen. So, how many of you know any, something about the mastermind formula that Jack Boland created? Anybody ever done the mastermind steps? You know what the last line of the mastermind steps is? I go forth with a spirit of enthusiasm, excitement, and expectancy. Right? Today, that's what, I, that's what I'd hope that you be is that you live your life from this day forward going forth with a spirit of enthusiasm, excitement, and expectancy. Because you know that you are the key to the kingdom. Amen? God bless you all. Have a great day. This is the time of giving of our gifts and tithes, and we invite you to hold them in your hand as we bless them together. All right, so you ready? That whatever you bind, whatever you hold on to, whatever limitations you believe about yourself, you get them. You 100% get them. And any limitation you let go of, you are free from it forever. that God so believes in us that we are given complete free will. You never have to believe that you're created in the image and likeness of God. You get to hold on to whatever limitation you want for as long as you want. But the moment you know the truth, you're free forever. Okay, you ready? Let's stand, let's sing together our song of peace. And Together, our prayer for protection.
The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. God bless you all. Have a great day. Thanks for being here.